All right, now that my trip is all over and done with, um, I'm gonna go through everything that I took with me, everything that I needed, everything that I didn't need, things that I would take again, um, and things that I'd leave behind. Um, as it was my first big trip, camping trip on the motorbike, I didn't really know how much to take, what I'd need, what I didn't need. Um, this is a couple of things I took too much of, some things I didn't use. So I'll go through a couple of the smaller items here um, before we get into it. Uh, so we'll go with cooking. So I've got a uh, just a Profuel butane gas um, canister, and then I've got a 360 degrees, uh, it's a Ferno 360 degrees burner. Comes in a small little case here, and uh, this just screws on top of here. And that opens up like that. Uh, also in here, I've just got a eBay, uh, one of those electric lighters. It's not a gas lighter. It's just a uh, electric powered little, I don't know what you call it, but that fits inside there as well. On top of that, I've got a, uh, I think it just comes out of the Kmart kit, just a little fry pan. So I only took one of these. I thought that will get me through everything. Um, warming up cans of food, cooking a little steak or meat or something. Um, so I thought that would be all right, and uh, I didn't use any of it. So for this trip, we stayed at caravan parks, so which had cooking facilities, uh, microwaves, stoves, cutlery, everything. So I didn't actually use this. So if I was going to do it again and stay at caravan parks and not actually camp uh, where anyone has no facilities, I probably would leave it at home. Um, but it is also good to have um, if you're off the beaten track um, as this is a fairly small setup. You probably can get even smaller, what's this? This is 230 grams, so you can get smaller ones of these. I'm not sure how long they last. I actually haven't tested it, but, and, and this just folds up back in this container somehow. And then uh, this lighter fits in there. And the lid goes back on there. So I think this cost me, it was $26 from Anaconda, which is pretty good. I think these, uh, I didn't get these that came up for $4.50 and I think they're about $10 at Anaconda. Um, and this was a set of three. This is the fry pan. You get a couple little saucepans and that, and they were $19 at Kmart, so. Cooking wise, not a bad setup. Oh, and cutlery. This is also from Kmart. It's a plastic three piece um, set. And I've used this multiple camping trips in my, uh, in my uh, four wheel drive as well. And this has lasted me years. Uh, the knife is actually not too bad. It's sharp enough to get through a, uh, a steak. So not a bad kit. Uh, also in the way of uh, food, um, I don't have any with me at the moment, but I did take those uh, Heinz Chunkies, like pepper mushroom steak, ravioli, um, can't remember what other flavors I had, just like those stew type of things. And also took a couple of these backcountry uh, dehydrated meals. So this one's cottage pie, haven't tried that one. I did try the carbonara and the spaghetti bolognese. Carbonara, not too bad. Spaghetti bolognese, really good. Um, exceeded my expectations. So I took this, these because they're small, compact, light. They're on special. Um, and yeah, all we need to do is boil some hot water, uh, which you can do in the pan. And uh, yeah, just boil some hot water in the pan and stuff and then add it to that. And that's all good. Um, so cooking, that's pretty much my cooking. And um, there's really nothing else to go along with that. Um, some other nice things to have while camping, mosquito net. I um, think there's a couple of bucks each from Anaconda. Didn't use it, didn't need it, but I had it just in case. Look how small, it's uh, squishy. This just tucks anywhere in your panniers. Um, that's good. Also mosquito patches. 
Um, again, these are nice and small. You probably can't even take them out of the packet again. Uh, they are only in little plastic containers, so you can slide them anywhere, but they're good to stick on camp chairs, uh, on your tent, anywhere that mosquitoes, but we didn't have any issues with mosquitoes while we're out, so that wasn't an issue there. Um, that's about it for that. Oh, and a headlamp. Uh, this one here is years old, um, just from Kmart. So, not sure what it runs on. I think it's just batteries. I honestly haven't changed the batteries in this for years. So, um, yeah, there we go. It's just three double R triple A's. But again, Kmart, it works. Um, I've had this for years, multiple four-wheel driving trips, and uh, it's good. Hang from your top of your tent if you need a uh, light inside your tent. It's got white, red, flashing red if you need to get someone's attention. Always good to have. Um, we'll get into, uh, what are we going to? Camp chair. This is a rock cloud camp chair, camp furniture. I'll put a photo of it up here, or here, this side. Uh, of it set up, of one set up. It's um, similar to the Helinox that people have. Didn't use it. Um, as I said, we stayed at Caravan Parks and we set up base in the kitchen area. So didn't actually uh, need a chair. Um, so if I was doing it again, um, if I was setting up at Caravan Parks, places that had seating, probably wouldn't take it. If I was going on a one night trip away by myself, might take it, depending on space. Um, but really, handy to have if you're camping off the grid at campsites and you want to sit around the fire and stuff, definitely handy to have. Um, that's just off Anaconda and I think it was about 50 bucks. And going to, um, I'll move this out of the way, I'm going to sleeping gear. So, all right, so for sleeping gear, this is my tent. It's a Nature Hike Cloud Up One. Uh, I believe this cost me $109 off Amazon. Uh, usually retail for about $159. Uh, got it on special, got a while ago. Uh, really good. So fits one person. It's sort of a triangle shape, really easy to put up and down. Uh, it comes with a, uh, a mat as well. So sleeping mat, you put that down first. Put your poles up, put the tent inside and just clip it up. Put the fly over the top, really simple. And uh, this is your, I forgot to put these in with the bag, but this is your tent pegs. Um, you just probably put a couple of pegs around, it's all good. There is a uh, strings if you want to uh, pull it out a bit. If you're staying camp for a bit or it's really windy, you want to settle the tent down, that's all good. Um, highly recommend it. Um, as you can see in this photo here, I'll chuck a photo up here. We had water gushing through our um, our campsite and was actually uh, flowing up over the tent and not a drop of water in there. So very good, um, highly recommend it. Uh, we did sleep in some warmer weather. It's fine, it's got a lot of airflow. Um, you can leave the front door open with the big mesh uh, mesh door opening there um, as you got the mesh door here and you've got cover here so it's sort of like a little uh, pergola thing where I kept my boots and a couple other things just inside the door but outside the actual tent uh, just out of the weather but kept it there fine um, very good love it um, a side door entry tent might be better uh, with a two person tent if you want to store a few more things in there because it isn't a lot of space inside there but for me, it worked fine. I was happy with it. Uh, for a pillow, um, just a cheap one. I think it was 20 bucks off uh, Amazon. It's just an inflatable pillow. Um, it's okay. It's not the biggest. Um, it's comfortable enough, but it works. It's compact. And uh, yeah, I had no real issues with it. Just got to let air out until you feel comfortable. Um, sleeping mat is this. It's a Denali uh, Trek Long from Amazon. These, uh, I think I paid $49 or $50, I think, for it. 
it actually comes in this uh, this bag too. So this bag comes with it. So comes in this bag, and that's uh, that's your mat there as well. So you could always put your sleeping mat. Maybe next time what I'll do is I'll probably put my sleeping mat together along with my sleeping bag in the same uh, same waterproof bag. Um, but yeah, so uh, the bag's good. I actually had this uh, strapped to the outside of my panniers because I didn't have any room inside my panniers and no issues, didn't leak. The mat itself, self-inflating. Um, I did give it a few, uh, few puffs of air just to inflate it a little bit and then just sort of let it out until you feel comfortable. Um, I actually enjoyed sleeping on it. I'm glad I picked that up before I went and uh, very happy with it for 50 bucks. Can't complain, it's thick enough, it's comfortable enough. I did have one of those thin air inflating ones. Um, slept on it once when I went camping. Um, my four wheel drive just testing out, didn't like it at all. So that's why I grabbed this uh, self inflating one from Anaconda, 50 bucks. For my uh, sleeping bag, so this is a uh, Denali Light 200. Don't even know what this cost me, can't remember. I'll put it up on the screen here. So comfort rating of minus two, um, and then weight 1.57 kilos, 225 by 80 by 55 centimeters. So it's 225 long, 80 wide. Um, you can unzip this all the way to have it like a blanket and uh, no complaints, it kept me warm. Uh, like I said, we had some warm nights anyway, so I pretty much just used it as a blanket and stuck one leg out for temperature control. And uh, no issues with that. So, enjoyed it. Um, I think that's it. So, another thing is I've got a flex tail pump. Um, I did take this because my last, uh, my last uh, air mattress was an air pump and this is just uh, battery operated little pump I think it was 20 bucks 30 bucks off Amazon um, I only have it for my pillow so do I need it no because it's only my pillow and that just takes five six breaths of air and it's fine so would I take it again probably not if that's the only thing I need to pump up so yeah what uh, I don't know, it's small, but it does take up space and it's something that's not really needed. So that's, uh, that's my camping gear. And also uh, I've got a set of uh, quick dry microfiber towels. So this comes with a big one and a smaller one. Um, that's really good for, uh, for your camping. I enjoyed it. So um, they're all right. They're just microfiber towels. Really comfortable, just Amazon again, 20 bucks, I think. So. So camping wise, um, I'll take everything again, apart from the pump. Pump, no, because I'm not gonna pump up the pillow. Would, uh, yeah, everything here, highly recommend. Had no issues with it. Um, it was really comfortable to sleep with. And uh, yep, everything I'll, I would take again. All right, we'll get on to uh, the uh, electronics and camera gear, I think. All right, so. How I record everything, camera gear. Um, start off with the camera that I'm filming on now, and it is, I'll show you, I'll record on my phone, the exact setup I've got at the moment. So this is my camera. It's a A7 III with a uh, Samyang 35 to 152 2.8 with a variable ND filter on it. Currently using the uh, Ulanzi U mic for the microphone, and this is the camera that I did uh, my photos and recording with. So it's a good camera, good lens. Um, I needed this lens here, the uh, 35 to 150, because I've only got a 24 to 70, and I didn't want to take my uh, 200 to 600 mil lens because it wouldn't fit anywhere. And so I thought this here will do for a bit of long range and short range stuff. And I also took a uh, Samyang 14mm f2.8 lens. It's okay, 
As you can see in a few of my previous videos, it does focus breathe a lot. So I am looking at getting probably a Sony 16 to 35 2.8 or something, uh, but to fill that gap between wide angle and 35 mil for this one. Uh, what else did I do? So um, GoPro, I've got a GoPro Hero 10 uh, with uh, I've got the Polar Pro ND filters and a GoPro Media Mod. Um, before I went on this trip, I just got the Media Mod. I wasn't going to, but found it on Facebook Marketplace, fairly cheap, brand new. So I got that. Do I regret getting it? Yes, I do. So. The media mod has two inputs. It's got USB-C for charging and uh, microphone input for my microphone from my helmet. Microphone input kept playing up. The whole trip would always play up, not connect properly. And as soon as I connect the USB-C for charging, uh, eventually a GoPro would just freeze up and just not work. It was game the shits. Also with the media mod is when it's inside, the fingers at the bottom here that flip up and then you screw your mount onto it means you can't get the media mod off again. So if you do need to pull a battery out, reset the GoPro, change the battery, you have to undo the whole mount, undo the fingers, slide the GoPro out and then get to the battery. So I wasn't, uh, wasn't happy with that setup. Um, unfortunately, it's all I had while I was on trip. So that's all I had to deal with. Uh, the whole trip. So I'm going back to using the GoPro housing. Um, I did break my plastic one before I went on the trip, hence I had to get the medium mod because I thought, let's just go the medium mod. So I've got this uh, newer um, aluminum housing and the old style GoPro dongle. So it has microphone input and USB-C input for charging. So the GoPro in there, plug that into the GoPro and there you go. If you need to undo the GoPro, get to the battery, there you go. You've got straight to the battery. Need to get the GoPro out, flip it down, there you go, you can take the GoPro out. No mucking around with housings and stuff. So I'll see how that goes. It is a fair bit heavier than the that, so I'll see how it goes on the helmet. If not, I might have to look at getting the plastic one again, but we'll see that, uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll only, got it when I got back because I ordered it when I was away. So I haven't actually used that yet. This here, I've used a lot. Um, never had an issue with GoPro freezing, with audio issues, with that GoPro dongle. So yeah, it's up to you what you wanna do, but I'd go with the GoPro dongle instead of the medium mod. Other cameras, Insta360 ONE X2. Didn't use it a whole lot. Um, it is good for getting footage. I did a lot of footage down the Great Ocean Road with it. Um, did a little bit in the Flinders Ranges. Um, just more concerned about that, dropping it. Uh, once you drop it and you scratch a lens or you break a lens, it's, yeah, it's expensive to replace. Um, I didn't trust the mounts on my bike because it did flex a lot. So I've got the uh, Insta360 pole. Um, and yeah, sort of it does bounce a lot and put a lot of pressure on the mount on the bike and I didn't want to lose it. So I didn't use it as much as I would like, but I'll still take it with me. Um, it's really good for taking selfies, taking 360 video, having close to the mount, that's fine. Your Lanzi mic system, um, I took it with me. Unless I was gonna do videos like this, I probably wouldn't take it again. I would uh, just use a, probably not even this, I'll probably just get, this is a Rode VideoMic Pro, I think it is. I'd probably get the smaller version, which isn't battery operated, just a little version that plugs in, stick that on the camera, um, and that'd be a lot better um, than taking like a whole wireless mic setup or a big ass camera, like a big ass bloody microphone like that. Um, Oh, I'll stick this. So that's, yeah, that's probably what I'd do with that. Uh, another reason I use my GoPro a lot more is because of the focus breathing on this lens. Didn't like it. 
so I actually switched to using my GoPro for a lot of the just standard vlog style videos, which I didn't like doing, but 35 mil, I have to hold the camera way too far out and it just doesn't look good. Um, the 14 mil, it's focus breathing issues. Wasn't happy with the quality and the back and forth, so I just use the GoPro. It's uh, simple to use. Couple of things I took, I've got a Teleson GoPro battery charger, USB-C charging, um, charge three at a time. Uh, the Polar Pro filters for my GoPro. Uh, I've got, I had to pick up, I didn't actually take a wall charger with me. So I had to drop into uh, Kadena Kmart, picked up a wall charger, 40 bucks. Uh, a couple other things that I took with me is a uh, ND filter for this camera and a um, polarizing filter for the camera as well. They just live in here, in this little camera bag. Um, lots of GoPro batteries and spare camera batteries and just GoPro pieces, same in here. I've got abundance of spare GoPro pieces, uh, which I probably would limit how much I take with me and I probably wouldn't take this case with me again. I'd uh, just take, you know, I've got six GoPro batteries. I'd just take those and a couple of spare mounts just in case I break it. I wouldn't take this whole case with all the GoPro mounts again. Just takes up a fair bit of space in there just for spare parts. Um, also in there, I kept a lot of uh, spare USB-C cables or USB cables, mostly USB-C because that's what everything runs off that I have. Um, looking on to tripods so i've got this uh Yulanzi mt44 i think it is um yeah mt44 so under that tripod sits like that uh then you can extend it extends all right it's got a ball head mount on it which is uh pretty good it's just got a standard uh quarter inch mount so i can uh screw my gopro onto it if i want I can screw my 360 camera onto it and I can mount my, uh, mount my big camera on it. Apart from, I can't have it up with the big camera, it just falls down because it's a bit too heavy. That's only with this big lens. Um, I'm not sure about any other lenses. I haven't actually tried it. Also comes with a phone mount. So you want to stick your mobile phone in there. There we go. So come to the phone mount, do some vlogging. Do some video with it. Um, yeah, it's actually, I think it was about 40, $45 maybe, $40. Not I'm not sure, bought a while ago, but um, yeah, you land the uh, MT44. And then just a little GoPro handheld thing. So when I was cruising around, I was just using this. And then the GoPro uh, grip. So this is what I stuck on the bikes to get a couple of the uh, side shots. Um, that's not too bad. It's, well, I'll, I'll take everything with me again. For power, I've got a Signet um, Charge Up Edge 27K, which is 27,000 milliamp hour. Massive battery, has two USB-C outputs and a USB output. Uh, but yeah, 27,000 milliamp hour, it, uh, it's got a lot of charge can charge uh, my camera, my drones, everything I need. Um, what I did for this is I stuck uh, Velcro on the top here and I'll grab my, uh, so what I've done is I've actually stuck, stuck Velcro on there and then stuck Velcro there and it sat in there. So uh, yeah, just use this Velcro and just stick some stuff in here Works really well, it's out of the way, it's there when you need it. So, yeah, I see, uh, did that before I left and really happy with it. Um, will I take it again? Yes, but instead of this, I'm actually looking to get one of these. It's the King's 24 amp hour battery pack, which has a couple of USB-C outputs, a couple of USB outputs, and also cigarette lighter 12 volt outputs. On the other side, it's got an amber light and a white light. So it's a battery pack, torch, charger, all in one with cigarette light outputs. 
secret lottery outputs, um, so 12 volt accessory outputs, which I can charge my laptop and everything from as well. It is 24 amp hour instead of 27 amp hour, but it, the size of this, I can probably take both, depending on where I'm going and how much space I have. Um, We'll have to see how that goes in the future and wait for them to get back in stock and go on special because they usually can pick them up around the low 200s at the moment they're 350 don't want to spend that um this bag is just a, a ulanzi bag yes yeah, so i've got a few land ulandi things that make some decent quality products and that was just where my lenses and camera gear was stored so going into my drone um, what I've got is a DJI Mini 3 Pro. Um, it's a tiny little 249 gram drone. Uh, yeah, so nice, small, compact. Comes everything fits in this little bag. So it comes with the drone itself. Um, you get three batteries. Uh, this is a fly more kit, so you get three batteries, and you get this little charger uh, charger block. Comes with this, uh, the RC remote, I believe it is, with the screen, uh, which means you don't need to have your phone or anything with you. You just uh, turn it on, turn the drone on, she syncs up, and you fly it straight from this. And also, I've got my uh, Freewell uh, ND filters, uh, anamorphic lens, so wide angle lens, anamorphic lens, and the ND filters. Normally, use these ND filters with the uh, anamorphic lens for. Um, that cinematic uh, squished uh, photography look. So yeah, uh, it's good. Comes in this little bag when you get the uh, fly more kit. The Mini 3 Pro, would I recommend it? Yes, it's an awesome drone. Um, for motorbike riding, no. Um, I could not get it to active track motorbikes. So got it to active track car. I got it to active track me when I was walking. I got it to active track a boat when I was in Portland. Uh, motorbikes? No. I'm not sure if it's a drone issue or a, a visual issue, what it is, but it won't active track a, a, a motorbike. So um, I tried plenty of times, but I didn't use it as much as I would like to. I need to figure out that active track issue with the motorbike. So, yeah. Um, We'll see if there's a future update, they'll add motorbike active tracks to it. I know uh, there is a few complaints online about the same thing, not active tracking motorbikes. I think that's all for the camera gear. I'm gonna get on to having a look at other accessories that I had on the bike, like tools and my side bags. So let's uh, rip these side bags off, get rid of the camera gear and have a look at what's, uh, what's in them. All right, so got these uh, bags off. As you can tell, <laughs> one side is very dirty and the other side is very clean. So they got a bit of a beating uh, sitting on the side of the bike, but no issues at all. They uh, stayed waterproof the whole time. Uh, no dust or anything got in them that I noticed. Um, this is actually my first time taking them off the bike and having a look into them. So we'll uh, have a look. So inside here, what have we got? So I got some straps, so got a, uh, got a lot of straps, so I use the straps to tie down um, my water bladder, uh, my bladder, the uh, fuel bladder, the bag on top, a couple other things onto the bike. Um, what else, we got a uh, pair of vice grips and uh, some more uh, little pliers, a couple more little uh, tie straps as well air compressor what else all right uh, that's everything that's in here yeah all right so got just a uh, king chrome stanley knife or blade yeah just a king chrome blade pair of uh, wire cutters Couple of pairs of pliers, vice grips, a uh, range of different straps that I use to tie my fuel bladder down and my uh, couple other things down. Uh, also my air compressor. This is a tire inflator air compressor. 
off uh, Amazon. Didn't actually use it at all. I have used it previously, pumping up the tires. Didn't have to use it on a trip, but it's battery operated, has a torch on the front, also has uh, USB-C charging and a USB output if you want to use it as a battery bank. Um, but yeah, just had that there just in case. It's fairly compact. Um, it's not as compact as sort of your ones that you connect to your battery. Uh, but, you know, I looked at like, do I get a battery operated one or do I get a uh, rechargeable one? And I went for this rechargeable option. So these straps are pretty much, that was pretty much what was in there before. And these straps are what were, uh, what were just from my uh, tying stuff down on my panniers and my fuel bladder and stuff when I needed it. Um, then I had a spare one that I didn't even use or open, so that was put in there as well. Now to the other side. So this is where I keep my, uh, my tool roll. So keep my tool roll in there. Um, tire repair kit. So I did have So that's a tire repair kit that I got, um, but that was too big to put on my bike. So what I did is I took the important bits out, stuck them uh, in a bag and uh, put them uh, in, the, in this bag here. So they uh, were nice and compact. Um, and then I had a roll of, uh, just roll of tape. And I did have a couple other rolls of tape, but I actually took them out and used them um, and then I'll put them back in my other bag. So I've already unpacked those. So a couple of rolls of tape and uh, yeah, the tire, the tire kit, um, but yeah, not in the box. So inside my tool roll, I just kept a basic set of spanners, uh, ratchets, sockets, and uh, Allen keys. So as you can see, that's That's my tool roll. So I've got a couple of different size screwdrivers and I've got everything from a uh, eight mil spanner up to a 13 mil. Then I've got a uh, ratchet. Then I've got a heap of little sockets here and also a uh, full size uh, hex head, Allen key head screw set as well. One thing I realized after I got back to Melbourne was my bike doesn't actually have a spanner or a socket for my uh, rear tire. So I'm lucky I didn't need to take my rear tire off. Um, so it's 32 mil. So I reckon one of my, uh, soon I'm gonna have to go out and I'll get a 32 mil spanner. I uh, might see if there's a uh, bike specific one just to be compact or uh, just go to Bunnings or Total Tools and grab one for it. Apart from that, I think that's, uh, that's everything. I'll uh, just, clear, I'll show you my storage the what I had for storage so I'll quickly uh, pack this away and clear the table oh, actually one thing I missed was maps so um, I had everything planned out on electronic maps on my phone and my uh, laptop but also always like to have paper maps so I got a South Australia uh, HEMA map and I got a Flinders Rangers and also Victoria. And then I picked up this handy uh, Australia Road and Four Wheel Drive Atlas. So this is actually a small version of every HEMA map. So it's a bit smaller than an A4 page, a um, little bit thick, but this here is pretty much all you need. Um, so it depends where you're going if you wanna pick up individual maps for your routes. They are good because you can see in large format where you're going, or if you just want something general, just uh, one, of, uh, one of these is uh, not bad. It's always good to have backup maps. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we did have everything on electronic versions, but I said backup maps, um, always good to have just in case something isn't going right on your phone, got no instant reception, can't download it, can't view it. And then, I don't know where I got this bubble wrap from, but I just kept in this bubble wrap. Um, I personally didn't have a locator beacon, 
I didn't buy one because my mate had one. Um, he had this one, which is from BTF or Anaconda. I can't remember where he picked it up from. Uh, if he didn't have one, I definitely would have one. Um, I wouldn't be going. Uh, I wouldn't be going out without one. Um, that's all about it. Uh, also, ambulance cover. Make sure you get ambulance cover. I made my mate get ambulance cover when we got to Flinders Ranges because I spoke about it. He said I don't have it. And I said get it now because you don't want to be having an accident and then uh, have a bill for ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars to get a helicopter out of the Flinders Ranges. So. 50 bucks a year, Victoria ambulance cover, get it, Medicare, whatever uh, ambulance cover you want. Make sure you get it. And yeah, personal locator beacon, I don't have one here personally with me, but we did have one on the trip. Uh, storage. So, as you see in my previous video, I've got my panniers. Um, like I showed you before, I had the Velcro in the top of these and uh, where I stuck things up on, and that worked fine. I, um, I really want to get a, uh, a net so I can stick things down like the map and other stuff. I can stick it in there and it doesn't fall every time you open the uh, lid because I did have these pretty, uh, pretty tightly packed on the trip. Actually, there is a couple of things left in here. Um, oh yeah, there's my, my duct tape. Um, the Rain-X uh, Plasti Cleaner um, for my, uh, oh, that's for my camera bag. Um, yeah, rain -X for my visor. And then multiple, uh, <laughs> multiple uh, microfiber cloths for cleaning. A um, couple of uh, gotcha straps. Couple more uh, Velcro cable ties and a first aid kit. Very important part of the uh, your yeah, safety safety stuff. Uh, yeah, it goes along with your PLB. Um, yeah, so it's just a first aid survival kit from Anaconda. Thirty-five bucks, thirty bucks, I think it cost me. Has pretty much everything you sort of need in a uh, dry bag. Pretty for pretty compact. And fits in the pannier there well. Um, so yeah, I've got my panniers. Also took this tail bag, which is a SW Motec. I can't remember what it is. I think it's a rack pack maybe. Um, I don't know what it is. It doesn't actually tell me anywhere, does it? No, it doesn't actually tell me. But it's I think it's about a 40 litre. It's got a couple of zippers on the side here, a couple of expansion pockets, and uh, yeah, that's just what I put on my, uh, behind me, and my fuel bladder was underneath it. Um, if I need to, I could always strap things on top of it, but highly recommend SW Motec bags. They aren't cheap, um, but they're definitely good quality. I did want to get the uh, next model up of this one, um, but I just haven't had a need yet. And when I've got this bike with these panniers, that's fine. Um, all right, we'll get rid of this and we'll get on to my clothing and clothing that I took with me and safety gear. So we'll start from the head down. Um, you see in previous videos, my helmet is a uh, Aero Commander helmet. Um, this helmet did fantastic. Uh, the, the peak does catch the wind. There was a couple of days where we had really high winds and it does catch the wind. Uh, we did end up taking the peak off one of the days that we did one of the longer trips um, and it was great. I uh, definitely needed to do that because kept catching the wind, ripping your head back a bit, wasn't comfortable. Uh, connected to this helmet, I have the Cardo X, uh, X2 or 2X. I can't remember which way it goes, but it has the internal speakers. Uh, with also a 3.5 mil jack and yeah that's a really good unit if you're after something budget you only have to speak to one other mate or something uh, 2x connects to two people i think the 4x next to four and then you got your pack torque bolt which is super expensive and uh, connects to multiple multiple riders but very light a uh, 15 
1510 grams so just over one and a half kilos very well weighted very comfortable um, very nicely built helmet so I really do recommend this helmet uh, they retail for $6.99 so yeah $6.99 uh, you can get them on special probably can find them cheaper around but retail price for that one um, goggles I did uh, grab myself a pair of uh, these fly goggles because I knew we were going to be going into dust and I didn't know how bad it was going to be dust wasn't that bad because it'd been raining so I didn't actually use the goggles um, they're still brand new in the packet didn't actually use them so next layer down would be the jacket I knew it was going to be hot so I've got my uh, dry rider uh, I believe it's like a air ride. The Vimmer label does it. I think it's like an air ride four or air ride three. Can't uh, 100% be sure, but it's very well vented. Um, no, no thermal properties at all. Um, yeah, but very comfortable. Um, it is is a nice jacket. It does have a waterproof lining. So this waterproof lining is literally just waterproof lining. Doesn't actually have a thermal liner, but it does block out a lot of cold, cold wind. Uh, so if it was cold and chilly, put that in. It does block out a lot of the cold from your arms and chest area. And uh, yeah, it did well. I do have a winter jumper, which is more sort of cold orientated and more waterproof. This isn't waterproof at all. Even with the waterproof liner, water still gets through. Gloves, these are a, uh, a summer glove as well. Not really made for cold climates, but I've got the hand guards on the bike and I've got the grip warmers, so it doesn't really matter too much. But these are Argon, not sure exactly, but they're about 100 bucks. Uh, carbon knuckles and uh, carbon uh, sliders on your hands here on the uh, sides there. These are the same gloves that I had my accident in and uh, they uh, tore, up the, uh, tore up the palms in my uh, old ones and they did well and they're very comfortable. They've got uh, air that you can get through in the knuckles and the thumb. Uh, really good gloves, recommend them. Um, yeah, can't really say too much else about them. Uh, for the pants, this is what I wore from uh, Melbourne, to Mount, uh, Melbourne to Mildura. And then uh, back from, uh, back from, uh, well, I think I wore these, yeah, back from uh, Mildura down to Mount Gambier, I wore these as well. They're RJ's Adventure, something like Adventure, or oh, Touring, I think. These are the, R the RJ's Tour Twos or something. So, yeah, they've got airflow at the back and airflow at the front. Nice big size pockets at the bottom. Um, you got your uh, expandable legs to go over your boots. Uh, these here are also in my accident with me. Um, they did get slightly damaged on the knee, where it's a bit of road rash on the uh, on the back and on the knee, but nothing uh, nothing too major. One of the pockets is also broken by the Velcro, but nothing too major. So that's what I wore uh, for the cooler days. For the hotter days, I have a pair of Fly MX pants. So these are standard, sort of very thin MX pants, but good breathability and uh, still a bit of protection. They've got padding on the knees and they've got these, I wouldn't really call it too much padding on the hips, but very comfortable. They go inside your boots as well. Um, so they've got vents on the back and on the front, let air flow through. They were very, very well, very good to have on those very hot days. So recommend those as i mentioned in my first video the boots that i have are alpine stars tech 7 enduros so these are your mx style boots um but these are your enduro dry stars so they have the uh they have the gripped bottoms and they've uh, got the uh, replaceable insert here so if you ever do wear that out from the pegs you can replace that uh very well uh, protector of the ankle so they've got a steel plate that goes to the bottom so you don't uh, flex your flex your foot 
Uh, there is no sideways movement in these at all. Um, yeah, you can't move these sideways. They've got hinges, which are squeaky. And then you got your uh, your four your four uh, locking brackets. What are they called? I don't know. Clips. Uh, and these are the dry star versions. So dry star versions have this uh, flap that goes pretty much all the way up to the top, uh, which makes them mostly waterproof. Um, I actually haven't tested the water resistance of them. It's not something I want to test, but uh, very comfortable very hot so they do get hot um on hot days but uh that's they do protect your protect your uh your feet your ankles uh from crush and uh twisting sort of uh injuries um they're not the best to walk in so when i did uh i'll grab them over here so what I did pack in one of my panniers was just my uh, Adidas sneakers here. These are just some old sneakers that I got that uh, are very packable. They collapse onto each other. They don't take too much space at all. So they're very old, but that's what I took when I needed to walk somewhere. Uh, like I said, 12 apostles. I switched these boots out for those uh, just to give my feet a bit of a break and walk around in. So yeah, if you're gonna plan on doing some hiking or some walks, Pack another pair of boots if you are wearing these sort of style boots. Uh, if you're doing any off-road adventure riding, I recommend a good good pair of these uh, over your standard street sort of boots. I do have a pair of street boots that I wear day to day around town, um, which offer protection, not amazing protection, but some protection. Yeah, that's, uh, that's about it for everything. We'll, um, there is nothing else that I can really think of that I took. So apart from the couple of camping things, um, oh, clothing. So other clothing, I took my normal toiletries bag, um, but clothes, I packed too many clothes. So I took about eight shirts, three pairs of pants, a pair of long pants, uh, about six pairs of long socks, four pairs of short socks, I overpacked. I could really reckon I could halve that. So knowing that I was staying at caravan parks and I had access to washing machines, I uh, probably could have even halved that down to four, four long socks, a couple of pairs of short socks, uh, your couple of just a pair of shorts and a pair of long pants, maybe depending on the weather. And then uh, yeah, four shirts, um, four shirts. That's really all I needed. So my clothes did take up a lot of room. Oh, and a really thin jumper. I took a thin jumper just in case, but that's that's about it. So yeah, looking back on what I would take, I'd cut down the clothing, re-look at my camping gear, depending where I'm going. Do I need to take my cooking gear? Do I not need to take it? Um, is there places that I can cook along the way? Is there places I can wash clothes along the way? Apart from that, that's about it. Um, if you've got any questions about the gear I have, uh, anything else you want to know about what I took, um, any recommendations, comment below, um, chuck a like on the video and uh, follow me for my next adventure. Alright, thanks for watching, see you on the next one.